Hi everyone, Warren here. Today we're going to be manually setting up the Yaling W60B handset and base. This base and handset will allow you to make and take phone calls using your VoIP number. The setup is really simple and shouldn't take us more than 10 minutes to go through. Okay, so first things first. I've already unboxed my unit, but here's a picture of what you get in the box. You'll find a Yaling base with a detachable stand, handset with the charging base, power adapters for both the base and the handset, Ethernet cable for connecting the base to your router, and the belt clip to mount the handset onto your hip if that's your style. Now, on my desk I have the handset and the base. I'm going to plug them into power and into my router and then see what happens after switching them on. So let's start with the base. So for the base you're going to pop off the, um, the, the, the mount or the stand um, and we're gonna just going to push it from the front and it should pop out. There we go. We're gonna take that out, put that down on the back there and we're now going to grab our ethernet cable and you'll see on the back of this base there's a power socket as well as an ethernet socket on the bottom rather. So we're going to pop our power cable and our ethernet cable into those. So that's what it's going to look like and now that we've got this plugged in the lights on the front of the base they've already started flashing so you're going to get some activity what we're now going to do is pop the the stand back on the base and have that go through its process then we're going to plug power into our handset's cradle Just take the handset off and you'll see on the on the on the back of the cradle you've got um apologies for my placement you've got the uh, the power socket um on the bottom of the cradle and we're going to plug our cable into that okay so now that we've got that plugged in pop the handset on the handset should also go through its boot up process and I'm just going to bring this bit a little bit closer for you so that you can see the lights uh, or the LEDs on the, um, on the base. Particularly from the bottom, you've got power. The middle LED is going to be LAN or Ethernet. And then the top LED indicates um, if the phone is connected to the base or not. Okay, you've also got a, a pairing button on the top section and that's going to help you connect up any extra handsets to the space in order to gain um, connectivity from the base to the handset. Okay, so now that we've gone through the switching on of our handset and base, we're now going to have a look at the configuration. Now, in order to configure the base, you'll have to log into the base like you would do for your Wi-Fi router. In order to configure the base, you'll have to log into the base like you would for your Wi-Fi router. So first thing we'll need to find is the IP address assigned to the base. This will allow us to log into the graphic user interface using your internet browser like Google Chrome or Firefox. To find the IP address on your handset, hit the OK button, then hit OK on status and hit OK on base. Let's have a quick look. So I'm bringing the handset up close. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. We're going to hit back to get out to the menu. Uh, so we're going to hit that OK button in the middle. It'll then take us to the status option by default and we hit OK on status. In here, you're going to have the option for base. You're going to hit OK on base. And it's going to take a few seconds, but if we pop down to IPv4, you'll see there's an IP address listed. You're going to take those set of numbers, pop them into your browser URL bar, which is the bar right on top, and hit Enter. 
Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to take that IP address and we're going to jump onto our internet browser and go through the configuration of this base and handset. Let's go. Okay, so now that we have the IP address that we found on the handset, we're going to pop it into my web address bar of my browser and then try and see if we can get onto the Yealink graphic user interface. So now we've, we've popped it in and hit enter and we're presented with the login page. The username by default as well as the password will be the words admin. Now if you don't know what the password is or if for some other reason the password was already set, um, the only way you're going to log in with the default username and password is to reset the space and that can be done on the handset. So now let's go ahead and click on login. Okay, so now that we are logged in, we're going to save our VoIP account information under the accounts tab on the top. Now in this section, you're going to need to enter your account information for that is supplied to you by your service provider. In my instance, it's going to be Web Africa and we're going to grab the settings. Now, before we grab the settings, the account should be set to account one and the register status is also important. That is going to change from disabled to registered. But before we do that, you need to select line active status on enabled. Then we're going to grab the, the information from my service provider to pop in there. The first thing is going to be the SIP username, which is also the phone number. You're going to pop it in the label section, as well as display name, register name, username. The password you're going to grab from your service provider as well. So we'll highlight that and copy it. And pop that in our password block. The server host, now this can sometimes be listed as different things. So they're essentially asking for our registration server. In some software or bases, it will be listed as a SIP domain, a SIP server, or a whole lot of other things. In our case, if we go to the settings, it will be listed as the registration server. Cool, copy that. Okay, so that's pasted. We see the port number being 5060, as you know, on VoIP you're going to use port 5060 in order to get out. If you didn't know that, well, now you know. Other than that, the rest of the settings are perfectly fine. You now just need to go down to the confirm button, hit confirm and wait for your settings to be applied. Okay, so the settings have been applied. We see the register status has been switched to registered. This is what we want to see. This tells me that my Yealink base that I've got is actually communicating with my service provider's SIP server or VoIP server. So all that's left now to do is actually just pop onto the handset and try making a phone call. Let's go and check out that handset. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and test our VoIP number to see if we can actually make any phone calls. So I'm going to phone Web Africa. Why not? So we're going to dial 86 and hit the dial button. Put it on speaker for everyone to hear. Hi there. Thank you for contacting Web Africa. Please well done. We've managed to actually call out. So my VoIP number that I've configured is successfully working. So that was the manual setup for our Yealink W60B base and handset. If this video was helpful at all, leave a like and subscribe for more helpful videos like this one. Thanks so much for your time. Bye-bye.